Baptists, and they first started coming to God, and they were ablaze. They were on fire. They, they couldn't get enough of the word. They couldn't get enough of church, and they were just so fervent and, and passionate and hard. Anybody know anybody like that this morning? A few of us might. They would pray all the time, and I, I, there's just something to be said about a, a believer that comes in when they first get a hold of God and how on fire they are, and that fire seems to be from the inside out. It's a, it's a genuine fire, and every time you see them, every time you come in contact with them, it's just something that, that resonates within that individual. Some of us may have started our walk that way, but over the years, maybe that fire has dampened out a little bit, or just life has maybe, let's just say, put some fire on the back burner, right? We go to work, we do what we do, and, and sometimes that, that fire, it, it has a way of maybe not burning so vigorously as it once did. So like any fire, if we look in the natural, we have to add, what, more oxygen and more fuel to get that, that fire to come up. So in the spiritual sense, wouldn't that be the same for us this morning or at any day? we got to add to our fire. You know, we got to pray. We need to read the Word. We need to be involved in church, mm -hmm. right? Things, all things that help keep that fire kindled. Some of us might be saying, you know, things in, in my spiritual life or things in my, my walk with God, maybe right now that's, it's a little dead. It's a little not like it used to be. My, my spiritual house needs to be more ablaze than it has been. And quite honestly, sometimes that, that fire is, is dwelt out because maybe we let the fire on our altar go out. So what do we do, church? What, how do we look at that? Well, one way to do that is, is in the Word. And, and fanning the flames get things going. And 2 Timothy 1 and 6 says this, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We have Paul here telling us that we need to stay spiritually alive. So we have one of the, 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 the men of God here telling us that there's, it takes work on our part to, to keep that fan aflame, right? right? It takes work on our part to, to keep things going. And let me just say this, church. Christians, as Christians, we have to recognize that the Lord is with us in, in all circumstances. Right. No matter where we find ourselves and no matter what situation we find ourselves in, God is there. It is never the fact that God leaves us. It's us that walks away from God or tries to hide from God, right? That's true. As, as a young man, as a young a little boy, I can remember getting in trouble and wanting to run away from my daddy because I knew I did wrong. Anybody ever been there, knew that you did something wrong and you knew you were going to get, well, in my case, I was going to get whacked by my dad. <laughs> I'm sure some of us have been there or... Maybe it was a grandparent that raised you and you knew you were going to get a stern talking to. It was going to be an uncomfortable situation. But the fact of the matter is, is God is always here and present and around us. It's just human beings. It's us that chooses to move away or hide from God. And circumstances in life, church, might hide things in the natural. Like our eyes might see one thing and, and can look at something and our skew or our view of that could be completely wrong. Anybody ever been there? I have. I've looked at stuff and uh, matter of fact, I was talking with Pastor about this the other day and I love talking to him sometimes because he, he's able to point out, just like other men of God, point out things in Brother Joe that maybe I need to change my perspective on or look at it differently. But I, I was looking at some, some numbers at work and, and they they seemed off, and, and quite frankly, I was viewing them, but I wasn't viewing them through the right lens. Like, numbers are numbers, right? Like, I can't change a decimal point or a one or a zero, but how I interpret that information or how I receive that information can be skewed. And that's the same with all of us, right? And, and I was in a situation, and I, I was looking at this, and, and I, I had a skewed point of view, and, and he said, wait a minute, Brother Joe, let's look at this. Light bulb goes on. I'm like, man, okay, all right. So sometimes there's things that we see one way with our natural eye, but our hearts and our spiritual mind might see it a little differently or should see it differently. And that's how we help stay in alignment. Amen? You see, just like the, the writer said, that our, our hearts will burn with hope. 
through the scriptures by faith, right? So what is faith? We all know that faith is, right, not by seeing, right? It's something that's built up. It's in us. So sometimes our natural eye will see one thing, but if we keep a hold of God, if we keep in the word, our hearts are going to burn, and faith is going to show us something differently than, than what our natural eyes see. And that's, that's an important thing about being a Christian because we can, all of us can get at times where we're in life and, and things are going on and, and we don't see something the way we ought to see it or we don't feel something the, the way that we ought to feel it. And I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional person, as, as you all well know. So sometimes when I don't feel right about something, when something doesn't feel good to me, it, it, it can affect me because I'm, it, it's in the natural. I have strong feelings and emotions about things. And so sometimes those feelings and those emotions can, can push me to a direction and I can find myself in a place to where I have to say, wait a minute, Brother Joe. Let's take a step back. What is the scripture or what does the word of God say? I have to ask myself, okay, God, I need to come to you, and you and I need to have a conversation here because I don't feel at ease about this, or this situation is, 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 is causing me to, to be stressed or to have anxiety or to, to look at things in a way that, that, that's causing issues. I think everybody, to some degree or another, can, in their own mind, cause themselves more grief than, than anything else. Right. A situation may, may not be that bad. But we can think about it, we can get it in our mind, and, and, and we can blow it up. Or the, I guess the term would be to make a mountain out of a molehill, to use a pest control reference. It can seem bigger than it is. And, and that happens in our life. And, and I think that it is extremely important for all of us to just sometimes take a step back, take a breath, say, okay, Lord, do I continue to look at things and see what's going on around me? Or am I going to just say, wait a minute, I have enough faith in my God, and I know that my God is big enough that if I truly give it to him, he can handle it. And at times, you know, we're all human, right? That It's easier said than done. I mean, we can say that. I mean, and I've had my pastor tell me, well, Brother Joe, practice what you preach. You said it. You know you're going through this, but yet you're still doing what you're doing. And it's okay. I, I need those reminders. But we're all the same. We all need correction, right? We all need that reminder, pardon me, <clears throat> in our lives to say, Amen. let's redirect or, or let's look at something from a different point of view. So here we, we see the disciples and, and they're discouraged because of the death of their hope for Redeemer. The disciples had, had walked with Jesus. They had all this time. And, and here we, we, you know, it gets to that point in, in the journey where Christ is crucified and the disciples are... Mm, to be quite honest, they were in a kind of a, a, a despair mode. They're like, they didn't know what to do. They were having a lot of emotions that I'm sure we all would have come up. And they described it this way. And it says in Luke 24, 19 through 24. And they said to him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Mm. So we find the disciples in a place where change is happening and they're not sure what to do. In our natural sense, we can not see God or see God working in our lives sometimes. Whether you're a Christian for 10, 20, 30 years, whether you're a Christian for three days, five days, however long that might be, the point I'm trying to make is there are times in our spiritual life where our eyes and in our flesh is not going to see what God is doing. That's just the fact of the matter. I, I had a 
few folks recently tell me about, about feelings and saying, man, I'm, I'm really going through it. And, and, and it just, it struck me because this is a, something that happens to many of us. And this wasn't just one fellow. This was a couple of fellows that I've had this conversation with. And they're like, I just don't feel God moving. I just don't feel God doing anything or I'm not seeing what's happening. And so we all find ourselves in that place. But what struck me out of that is through that intervention of God, I was able to fellowship with these different men at different times. And that fellowship was what allowed them to see, wait a minute, just because I don't see God doesn't mean that God isn't moving in my life. And I challenge all of us that if today is a day that you find ourselves or that we find ourselves saying, wait a minute, God, are you here? Are you still moving? Are you still present in this situation? Take a step back. Take a seat, take a breath, and just look and think about it. That day you were running late for work and you were driving out the house with your hair on fire and you were going this and that way. And then you realized you're going down the road and there was an accident that maybe you were a part of. Or you get to a certain certain stance or you get to work and you realize, wait a minute, that was God that kept me from this situation. Or that was God that allowed this situation to happen to me so that I could be in the right place to minister to somebody. God is always moving in our life, church. But sometimes we just have to take a breath and allow the situations to, to come up so we can see them. Because a lot of times our natural eyes aren't going to see the spiritual things that we need to see. Part of the way that we do that is fellowship together. You want to start seeing God work and move? I, I can't tell you how many times I've had the privilege to fellowship with other believers. And they start telling me things that, that God is doing or not doing in their lives and these things. And it just, not only does it help that believer or that brethren that you're talking to, it helps me because it points out in my life things that God's doing for me. It's always a two-way street, Pastor. It's always a two-way street. It always moves both ways. So we have this brethren and they're coming to me telling me about their situations and things and here's God illuminating things in my life. And I, and I love that about God. I love the, the duality of that. It always moves both ways. Luke 24, 15 and 16 says, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Sometimes we can be so busy with the daily lives and what we're doing that we, we can miss or the importance or we can miss the, the togetherness about when we come together, that, that that's what can kindle that fire. That's what can stoke that fire within me. That's what can stoke the fire within you. Hey, Brother George, how you doing today? How's work going? You know, hey, you were on my mind. I wanted to talk to you, and then you get to talking, and you see what God's doing, and that, that can stoke the fire, amen? It's, we're not singular in this whole thing by ourselves, floating along, just moving and going with the spirit of things. We need other people to, to kindle us. But more importantly, God uses you and me to kindle things in other people. Again, it's always a two-way street. You see, the fellowship, when believers get together and they fellowship, it's, it's a special blessing that can happen because when we do that, when we get together and we fellowship together, that brings us into the presence of God. That brings us into the place where, where angels can come and they want to hear, and, and God can move in that situation. And, and, and these disciples, they were they're sharing their most innermost feelings of, of disappointment in this situation. And, and it says, now that same day, two of them were going to a village, and I'm going to butcher this name, called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And suddenly, Jesus is there with them. We have the disciples. They're walking. They're talking. They're, they're, they're bouncing things off each other. They're being communal in fellowship, and they're, they're sharpening iron versus iron, and, and, and they're working things out. And we see here that, that all of a sudden God is there in the midst of that. And that's the same thing that happens to you and I when, when we share our feelings with other right. folks. 
it, it perks up the ear of the spiritual, and, and things want to say, well, wait a minute, what are they talking about? What, what's going on there? And, and I think that's in direct correlation to, you know, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Think about this for a second. If it says resist the devil and he will flee from you, how? Well, if I'm redirecting my mind and my thoughts on Jesus and spiritual things, and that brings light into my situation, how can the darkness stand against that? Right. We, we get in our minds and we get, you know, wherever it is, we get in thinking and things are coming against us. And, and he, the Bible says that he gave you, us power to overcome, right? Yes. How? Because when I'm focused on Jesus and my thoughts are on biblical things, it has to go away because I'm pushing that aside and I'm stoking the fire of the spirit within me. And that light and that fervency is going to push out those thoughts that are coming against our mind. Amen? Praise God. See, some of us don't always realize that Jesus is near when we need him the most. Right there. He didn't go anywhere. There's nothing quite like the presence of the Lord to put things in perspective in our life. You want to say, wait a minute, I'm not, like I said, I'm not at peace in this situation. I got some things going on in my life that aren't right and I'm struggling here. I guarantee you that if you take the time to put Jesus at the center of it and focus your mind and your thoughts on Jesus, those issues or those thoughts, they're, they're going to get pushed out. There's not enough room to have them in the same place. Amen? Praise God. But that takes us realizing the potential of that relationship, that re unique closeness between you and God and realizing it to, to say, wait a minute here. If Jesus led me through all of this, I went through this up and down, I went through this up and down, whether you're 15 years old or 50 years old, ups and downs in life, they come. And if God brought you through all of those, why would he all of a sudden just stop and walk away? God doesn't do that. He's saying, wait a minute, I was here, I was waiting, I was patient because I needed you to have your focus right and focused on me so you could see what I was doing for you. A lot of times we can have it in our mind that we're doing good or we're doing this and we're doing that and we're, gonna, we're going and we're going and we're going. Again, are we stopping when we need to stop and say, wait a minute, Lord, I need you to rekindle that fire in me. Are we stoking that spiritual fire in here so that way things don't affect us up here? Necessity, the quote says, necessity is not only the mother in, of invention, but it is also the mother of faith. Another quote puts it this way. Men who stagger beneath the load of grief will often look up through blinding tears to find the Savior watching and waiting. That's a pretty weighty statement. We're going through it. Sometimes we get to and we find ourselves in a place that where all we have left is our tears and our emotions and we're sitting there crying out because there's nowhere else to go. We can't see left. We can't see right. We can't see in front of us. We can't see behind us. All we see is our tears. And in that moment of clarity, when we look up, we see the God of all creation standing right there with his hands holding us up. That's a beautiful, beautiful illustration, church. And that's how God works in our lives. That's what he does. I, I, I can't tell you how many times in my life that I've been in situations and when I, like I said, took the time to pause and wait, I say, okay, wait a minute, God. You were right here through it all. Thank you, Jesus. Another story goes like this. There's a woman saint of God, and she was older in years, and she was infirm, and she was laying in the hospital, very sick and close to her deathbed, and she heard the, the enemy come up upon her and say, where is your God now? She paused for a moment, pointing to her heart. She said, he's right here where he's always been. God never leaves us nor forsakes us, church. But what we read or what we've been talking about this morning is it's a, it's a portion of scripture that's a very good example of 
Sometimes we don't recognize that it's God. Sometimes we don't recognize that that was God illustrating every avenue of our life as we were going from step to step to step. He was moving this. He was moving that. And he was allowing us to grow through some things. And, and no one likes to go through pain. No one, none of us likes to suffer. I would, I would say that's a pretty safe assumption. Do you agree, church? Amen. Yeah, none of us like to go anything. But we have to, at times, go through those hardships because it, it, it works some things out of us and, and it gets some things out of us. So that way we can say, wait a minute, I've seen through all the pain and I've seen through all the issues and I've seen that it was Jesus Christ that was working in my life. All praise and all glory to God for that. Amen. You see, because of our human nature, our fallen nature, some of us live continually in spiritual blindness. We can have it in our mind and our heart where to go to, but we just choose not to see what's right in front of us. Some of us folks are very stubborn people. I'm stubborn, by the way. And I, and I, and I love being transparent to you all because you know what? If God's working in my life in certain ways, I know he's working in other people's lives similarly. It may not be the same situation. It may not be the same circumstance, but it's the same God. Right, and that's awesome. But yet we're, we're stubborn and, and, and we just keep beating our head against that wall because we have to think if I keep beating my head against the wall, I'm going to have a breakthrough. Yeah. Now you might have a breakthrough in your head, but the same God is still there and it's the same God that tells us, wait a minute, maybe you ought to, to redirect where you're going here. Wait a minute, maybe you, you haven't recognized that maybe I put that wall there for you to grow a little bit for you to strengthen. Resistance training is something that we do in our muscles, right? We want to get stronger. It talks about running and resistance and endurance. Well, God's going to put things in our lives to spiritually make us resilient. Mary Magdalene, in her this time, if, if we look, and we're going to read this in a second, but she mistook Jesus for a gardener. It says, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. I love this right here. Jesus said to her, Mary. And I believe there was a pause right here. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni. In her grief and in her moment, she was so caught up in what was happening physically in front of her that she did not see that Jesus was right there. But in the stillness of that moment, in the stillness of that moment, she knew who gave her peace in her heart. And that's the same for you and I. If we take the time to just be still for a moment, we're going to know what's of God and what's not of God but again, we have to take off our spiritual blinders and we have to get a little bit of heartburn. Pardon me. A little bit of heartburn. What do you mean by that, Brother Joe? A little bit of heartburn. We've got to stoke that fire inside of us. We've got to put around and say, wait a minute, I need, to, I need to get a little bit of realignment here. We see that in this area the disciples they they recognized the presence of the lord but they didn't recognize him himself so what that tells me was there, there was a little bit of miscommunication here between what was going on in their hearts and what was going on in their minds luke 24 15 and 16 says this as they walked and discussed these things with each other jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him Okay. For whatever reason, in, in this situation, we see that the Lord kept the disciples from recognizing him. And Mark, Mark describes it this way in Mark 16 and 12. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. It's interesting to me, and, and, and as I was studying this, I think it's significant to note that Jesus hid himself from what they could see. 
but he didn't hide himself from their heart. He was right here inside of them all. And that's what he was telling his disciples. Wait a minute. What you see and what you're going through and what the ups and downs are isn't always what matters or should matter to you. It's what's inside of you that should matter. The Bible says it was their hearts that burned when the scriptures were revealed. You and I are going to see a lot of messed up things in this world as we go through it if you live long enough. But if my heart is right and if my heart is on fire for Jesus and my heart is where it should be, the things that I see and the things that I go through aren't going to have the same impact because it's settled in here. Change, our walk with God, it, it happens from the inside out. It happens from the inside of us. And if the inside is, is growing and the inside is on fire and the inside is purifying us, then eventually we're going to find ourselves to where our eyes are seeing what God wants us to see too. But it's a process to get there. Refinement is a process I don't know how many of you have seen or, or, or know much about refining, but they don't just throw it in there, let it go, take it out, dump it out, and say, there we go. Most of those metals are refined more than once because we get ore. Everybody familiar with ore? So ore, if you don't know, it, it's, it's a piece of rock or a piece of earth, and it has many different elements or things in it. And so the, the refiners, they, they put it in, and they burn it out at a temperature, and they get it hot and they bring it out, and then they draw it out, and it brings out one metal or one thing that they want, and they separate it, and then they put that mass back into the furnace or the kiln, and then they, they heat it up again, and it, and it brings out another thing that they want, and it, it's a process of separation and, and, and taking this lump of mass of things coiled together and separating it out. And that's what Jesus does with us, church. And it's not always things that we see with our, our, with our eyes. It takes a kindled or a heartburn to allow that to happen. Luke 24 and 32 says, were not our hearts burning within us while we had talked, while he had talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. Like those disciples, it is us that in this day and age that God allows us to, by working on our hearts, see him and see what he's doing more often. We have to have that church. We have to have that, that time. And, and, and how do we get there? Well, it says, through what? Through the scriptures. You want to get God inside of here and have him work and, and do things and, and, and push you beyond where you are? Read his word. And I don't mean read it like you read the newspaper pick it up and I get a new one every day and I can read a new story or read this. The news cycle is crazy, right? 24-hour news cycle, here's a whole new story. Forget about what you learned yesterday. Reading the scriptures is something that, that is built upon day after day after day. We take it, we learn it, we chew on it, we read it, we, we make it a part of who we are. And then we read a little more and we add to it and we add to it. And sometimes you'll have so many layers and you'll be moving on that God is even going to bring you or redirect you back to something that you read two, three, four months ago and you're going to say, wow, I never saw that. That's God stoking the fire in our hearts for him. Amen. You see, the, the disciples here, they, they labored under a false impression of, of who God was. They thought, you know, Jesus was going to come and he was going to be the king and he was going to take Israel out and and all these things, and they, they didn't see it. They, they, they had a form of worship, you know, why they were with Jesus. Things were good, and they believed what he said, but some of the things that Jesus said really didn't settle in until after the events happened. We read in John 12 and 13, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. But the disciples in this setting, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't fit a suffering Savior into their worldview of who Jesus was. So again, sometimes our natural eyes can be looking at something in a, in a form or a fashion, and, and our spiritual eyes miss it. And we know that because in Luke, the, the disciples said this, 
And this is 24 and 21. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. See, these disciples, they were about ready to, to, to see, and it was about ready to make sense. And Well, they were about to experience a, a good case of heartburn because Jesus was pointing them back to the scriptures to say, wait a minute, you spent all this time with me. You walked with me, and we talked, and but you still missed something here. He was trying to tell the disciples, that, keep it right here. Make it a part of who you are. This isn't something that you or I get to just walk through. I mean, we can choose to do that, but when it gets to the end of that finish line, we're going to find ourselves that we didn't make it to the finish line. Why? Because we didn't stay prayed up and we didn't stay read up. There is nothing. Hold up your Bible if you have a Bible with you or if your phone, wherever you're getting your, your scriptures from. There ain't nothing in this word, church, that, that can't get you through a situation. And that's what Jesus was telling them. That, Wait a minute, you got to get back in there. you got to kindle that fire. you got to kindle that scripture. you got to get that thing ablaze inside you and keep it burning. I know a lot of folks have told me, man, I, I don't understand the Bible. I, I, I don't know what it's saying. And, and I understand comprehension for some folks is, is difficult, but there are multiple translations of the Bible. Um, I'm not saying they're all right or wrong. What I'm saying is there's a way, especially with technology nowadays, you can find about anything you're going through in the Bible. You have this thing called Google, right? The Internet is a great search tool. I'm going through a situation. I don't know, and I remember that. What I'm saying is we, can, we have the ability to go up on this thing, and we can look and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, I'm just going to throw out an example. I'm, I'm dealing with issue, you know, with my spouse. My spouse and I aren't getting along, right? Look it up. What does the Bible say about getting along with your spouse. We can look it up. We can do topographical Bible studies on any situation that we're going through. So in this day and age, we have no excuse not to see if we're going through something to find it in the word of God. Right. It's right there at our fingertips. And that's essentially what Jesus was telling his disciples. Wait, I talked to you. I told you Jesus was the Google of their day when it came to spiritual things. They walked and talked with God for not one day, not two days, they spent days and weeks and months and a few years with him. And that's what we need to do. And that's how we do it is through the scriptures. The scriptures keep us built up. The scriptures are what is going to keep our hearts on fire for God. Amen. Amen. That's why I love when I see new converts and new believers. And that's why I kind of go... Woohoo, when you see that, at least it does for me because I see somebody like, like we started with that so on fire for God that they're always in their Bible, they're praying, the light's turning on, and they just they radiate that. And that's that's amazing to see. But eventually, if, if that's not a part or a daily part of, of what we want or who we are, that fire starts to, to, to wane and it starts to draw out and you know, while Jesus was physically present with his disciples, they maintained hope when he was there with them and he was walking, right? When, when Jesus was healing people and, and feeding people, they were, yeah, 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 right there. It, it was great. It was, they, they saw it. It was physical. They, they, could, they could see the evidence of their God right before their eyes. But when Jesus wasn't there, when Jesus was gone, it says that there was only one of them still there at the cross. John was the only one. The rest of them were, were scattered. They chose to believe, but when things got to it, they scattered. And that, that's a good illustration of what can, can happen to us. We can start off on fire. We can start off so fervent for God that as the, the years and the days go by, if we're not careful, we can allow life and we can allow things to, to push us or carry us out of where Christ wants us to be. Jesus tried to warn them. He told them, eventually I'm going to be gone, but my spirit will be here. 
to help you and to guide you, but they didn't, they didn't grasp it. And sometimes, just like us, we don't grasp it until we're in it. Like we can, we can have our parents discipline us and warn us, don't touch that, don't do that, don't be that way, or don't do this, but guess what? Some of us just are going to do it. And when we touch it and we get burned, ow, that's hot, why did I do that? Right. And some of us, if we're smart enough to realize, wait a minute, someone tried to warn me or keep me from going through that. But that, I think that's just, that's just part of the human condition. Some of us just got to bump our head a little bit from time to time. You see, they, they were on fire and they were fervent when they were with Jesus during that time. But when he was gone and Jesus was trying to pass that mantle to them to say, wait a minute, eventually you guys, my disciples, you're going to be the one to feed the thousands. You're going to be the one that has to correct the children. You're going to be the one that's going to have to fix your marriage. You're going to be the one that has to push yourself through a situation. It was the Lord's way of telling them, yeah, I might not be physically in front of you right here, right now, but my spirit is with you and gives you enough power to still get through it. That's what Jesus was saying to them. Amen. He was saying to them that faith your faith eventually will have to replace my physical presence. It's not about what we see all the time. It's not about what we're going through all the time. Our faith in our almighty God has got to be that thing that kindles our fire to get us to where we need to go. And it's your faith in God. It's your faith, my faith in Jesus that's going to push us through. Because like I said, we're not always going to be able to see it. We're not always going to be able to feel God standing right next to us. But do I have enough faith in my heart to say, okay, God, I know I'm going through it, but I know you're still there. No matter what our minds I see, no matter what the enemy or the world tries to push at us and, and get in front of us to not see it, are we going to take the time to sit and be still and say, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Sometimes our, well, John 16 and 13, put 33, excuse me, John 16 and 33 puts it this way. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Luke 24, 28, 29. As they approached the village to watch, or to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with him. Do we want to keep him here? Do we want to stay with Jesus a little longer? Do we want to stay with God long enough that way eventually, no matter what our physical eyes see, our spiritual eyes will see truly what's going on in the environment around us? In Hebrews, and I'm going to paraphrase this, Hebrews 1, faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real, even when we, <clears throat> even when we don't see it. It is essential, church, that we maintain our desire to, to stay with Jesus. Luke 11, 9, and 10 says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks on the door will be opened. See, the disciples, they wanted to be with Jesus when things were good and things were going, but when they going got tough, they scattered in the wind. And that, there's a good illustration for us today that when things get tough, when things get going, are we going to run away from God and try to manage it on our own? Or are we going to have the wherewithal to say, wait a minute, this is the time where I need to dig in and stay closer to God no matter what's happening. So I, I would say this. Even if in this day, in this moment, there are some of us here who feel like God's a stranger to us, Talk to him. People say, well, it's not that simple, or is it that simple? Yes. 
it really truly is that simple. Right. It is that simple. No matter what is going on out here, no matter what's going on in here, talk to him. Keep yourself close enough to God to where he can minister to you. Or if God doesn't directly minister to you, he's gonna, if you ask him, as we read, keep banging on that door. If God doesn't directly minister to you, he's going to send someone to minister to you. Tell him, Lord, I thought you were going to fix this. Lord, I thought you were going to fix that. Lord, I, I thought you were going to fix my marriage. I, I thought you were going to work in my children's life. I thought you were going to give me this job. Lord, I, I thought this and I thought that. It is okay to have those open-ended conversations with God. And matter of fact, it's essential for you and I to have those conversations. It's essential for you and I to do that because when we do that and we urge God to say, wait a minute, I thought this and I thought that, if we're seeking God truly and we say, wait a minute, and we, like I said, take that moment to be still, God's going to show you, well, here's what I'm doing. Brother George, here's what I'm doing to help you and your children. Sister Cheryl, here's what I'm doing to, to help you with you and your family. Brother Godfrey, here's what I'm actually doing to help you and your family. He's going to show it. He's going to reveal it to us. Take time in your life daily to search God and ask him those questions or ask him those desires of your heart. And the Bible says that he'll, he'll reveal it to you. At the end of the day, if we do that, if we, if we stay at that altar and we keep the flame of the altar going, no matter what that altar is in our life, we're going to see that, okay, God, you, you have it in control. You actually have this taken care of for me. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? While well, he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. If you want your heart to burn, and I'm, and I'm closing, if we could all stand. If you or I want our hearts to be on fire or burn more fervently for God, A, we must fellowship with other believers. It is essential. It is essential to fellowship. It is also essential for us to put the effort into it. You want change in your life? You want change in God? You want God to reveal some things? Well, put some effort into it. I can't sit here and say, okay, God, you're doing this, you're doing that, and, and just go by the wayside. I have to be involved. You have to be personally involved. You and I have to personally make it up in our mind that says, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter how it's going, I am going to take the time to get a hold of my Jesus. I am picking up that spiritual phone to heaven, and I'm going to make my conversation known to him. We have to do that, church. We also have to take him home with us. We don't get the luxury or the option to come to church on Sunday and to come to church on Tuesday or whenever we're having church and keep it right here. We got to take it with us. Because if we leave it here, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays there. Brother Brad lost his keys this morning and couldn't find his keys. I hope he found them. If we leave something behind and we don't take it with us, we're going to lose it. There's going to be a part of us that just stays with it. And lastly, church, value your time with him. Value your time with Jesus. Whether it's a time of correction, whether it's a time of praise and admission and, and, and worship. Because at the end of the day, the things that you value are going to be the things that you hold dear and want to put something into. So if we value Jesus enough, if we value his counsel enough, our hearts will always be on fire and will always burn. Father God, I thank you again for this time, Lord. Father, I pray that everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord, that wherever they find themselves in life, that you would be the kindling their fire, that you would stoke the fire in their hearts for who you are, Lord. Lord, that you would reach down and touch them and they would know no matter what their situation, no matter where they find themselves, that you, my God, you are still here with us. In Jesus' name, amen.
If you'd like to fellowship, um, I ask that you would do that downstairs. But if you would like to pray, please come. These altars are open.